Hello everyone and welcome to Sewer U, Sewer University. We're going to talk today about the history of sewers and clean water in Northeast Ohio, specifically the greater Cleveland area. I am Frank Greenland. I'm the Director of Watershed Programs. This presentation is available on our website at narsd.org slash sewer U. I want to end with a discussion of issues, challenges, and solutions. Uh, and focus a little bit on stormwater. We're in business to protect and enhance water quality in these area streams in Lake Erie, in our member communities. A watershed is that area of land that drains to a specific river. When it rains, gravity takes that stormwater runoff to a stream. So in the broadest sense, we're in the Lake Erie watershed. Uh, we also have sub-watersheds, the Cuyahoga watershed, Rocky, Chagrin, uh, and even smaller subwatersheds to each of those major rivers. So Mill Creek, Big Creek, West Creek feed the Cuyahoga. So we've, that's a watershed. Now watersheds are impacted by sewer overflows, treatment plant discharges, and stormwater runoff. Uh, these are the major watersheds. Pink is the Rocky River Basin, and blue is the Cuyahoga River drainage area. What we call the Lake Erie tributaries are in green, light green. That's Euclid Creek, Doan Brook, Dugway, Nine Mile, there's some others. And in the light orange is the Chagrin River watershed. Now, Rocky, Chagrin, and Cuyahoga watersheds stretch, stretch well beyond the district service area, but we do encompass large portions, particularly the Cuyahoga in its northern reaches. And all those Lake Erie tribs, that's all us, primarily. These are the sub-watersheds I talked about. So each one of those four big watersheds has their own little watersheds. And I know it's 20, let's say 15 to 20 sub-watersheds. So you live in a watershed area. I don't know where you live, but if you live along Big Creek, you're in the Big Creek watershed area. The district developed a program. The fourth key responsibility of the district was regional stormwater management. And the district developed a program to tackle these stream issues that are largely inter-community in nature. Many communities discharge the Cuyahoga River. And to get a couple communities to fix a problem that emanates from multiple communities, but, or, but the problem's here, get everyone to fund it and fix it, doesn't happen, rarely happens. So as part of our regional responsibilities, we are responsible to tackle regional stormwater management issues. What looks like streams on this graphic are streams, and that is the district's regional stormwater drainage network. We don't own it. Property owners own the land, but we're responsible for maintenance activities and to correct problems, water quality problems, flooding problems, and erosion problems across this network. And I think we're inching towards 450 miles of drainage is under the district's responsibility. These are the key issues in stormwater runoff. It is not clean, so there are numerous water quality issues that stormwater runoff poses or creates. Flooding and erosion in our area is pretty significant. These streams, because of more development, more impervious surface, that means more stormwater volume and it gets there faster. So the streams are getting beaten up. Impervious surface is hard surface. Roads, sidewalks, your house, rooftops. You've changed the landscape. This area was not what it is today. And I'll show you some graphics, but it's hard surface. And when you lay a hard surface, the ability of stormwater, a rain event to go into the ground is dramatically reduced. So what happens is it runs off and the volume of runoff gets to the stream, much greater volume, and it gets there like this. And streams were sized for a certain amount of runoff. And as we've developed and built out, and it's not just a local phenomenon, this is going on everywhere, these streams have to adjust. And when they adjust, they down cut, they side cut, they road, and now, you know, houses are threatened, roads are threatened, bridges are threatened, so that, that constant meandering and erosion, accelerated erosion is causing problems across the region. This was a 1975 uh, supplemental judgment entry by Judge McMonagall, and the judge mandated that the district develop a, a plan to tackle this issue. Not just wastewater collection, but storm drainage. And that plan was to, to, to result in a program to tackle what the judge called inter 
community drainage issues, both storm and sanitary across the district. And the intercommunity term is really key. Think of the Cuyahoga River, you know, by the time it gets to Cleveland, I don't know how many communities have, have sent flow to that stream. And a lot of times these problems are at the downstream reaches of these streams. So the judge mandated that a regional entity tackle that because it was going to be very difficult for multiple communities to, to come together at the right time to solve the problem. So the district under its 6119, where a state statute run organization, Ohio 6119, gives us the authority to run a stormwater program. Our board of trustees adopted the program in 2010. Uh, and the reason they adopted it is these problems were accelerating. We had done multiple studies and the problems were accelerating over time. We did studies in the 70s, early 90s, 2000 time frame. All we were seeing in discussions with communities is the problems are increasing in scope, size, and cost. That led to the creation of the district stormwater program. Our waste stormwater service area almost mirrors the wastewater service area of the district, the sewage collection area. A few communities are not part of the stormwater. There are 62 in the wastewater. I think we're at 56 in the stormwater program, but it's essentially the same. That is a satellite image of the impervious surface coverage in our service area. And the dark color is not grass. It's impervious surface, and if it was grass, you'd see a lot of infiltration, but it's not. So you're seeing a lot of runoff, and the runoff hits these small streams and they're resizing themselves, and that's why we have the erosion, flooding, water quality issues we have. And this is the equation. Um, if you have natural ground cover, it's going to promote deeper, shallow and deep infiltration. A lot of that stuff's going to go into a forested area or grass less will run off to the river, and you'll have your evapotranspiration. But you want some groundwater in there to recharge a stream so that the stream holds flow all the time. And a lot of our watersheds, sub-watersheds, are in the 40 to 50 percent impervious range, which is extremely high. It does not promote deep infiltration, which means you're not recharging streams, which means in dry weather there's like this much flow in a stream, and in wet weather it's going crazy. So that's not real healthy from the aquatic community side of things. Um, so we've changed the game and our job is to deal with this situation and try and improve this situation for the area streams. Here's a good example of erosion. This is Chippewa Creek, tributary of the Cuyahoga River. It's pretty close uh, to a condominium development. And the district now has an active project that's moving into the design phase as we speak to tackle this erosion issue. Flooding is another issue. This is the border of Middleburg Heights and Brook Park. This is Sheldon Road uh, over Abram Creek. And Abram Creek routinely floods virtually every year, at least once, maybe a couple times. So this is an inner community issue and we currently have a Rocky River stormwater master planning study that's looking at what's the right solution here. This was a few years ago. This is Mill Creek along Warner Road. And if you know that Warner Turney area, it's busy. It's really busy. And we were watching erosion along Mill Creek. And then all of a sudden, I think it was a February storm, we lost that big chunk. And so the stream was, I mean, the, the bank was over here. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's gone. And one more drop, and there goes Warner Road. So this is an erosion problem, example of erosion that we temporarily stabilized as an emergency action and it's still holding. And again, a master plan will figure out what's the long-term fix. This is what you see out in the field. This is a debris rack along Dugway Brook doing a great job of trapping debris. The problem is you gotta remove debris. <laughs> and when you don't remove debris, you're creating a dam. And what you're seeing here is on the sides of that debris rack, accelerated erosion, and that debris rack's gonna go bye-bye soon. So, we have maintenance forces in place to tackle this and clean those racks so we don't lose those racks. I love this one. This is the washer dryer solution to erosion at the local level. This is a property owner on Stickney Creek who's having erosion and must have had a plethora of washers and dryers you know, at his or her disposal. But that's not the kind of fix that's going to work long term. And Stickney's a regional stream, so we will evaluate what's the best fix. But if you look behind 
the washers and dryers, you can see a lot of erosion, so it's not working. Almost as creative as the 55 gallon drum tire guardrail solution. Again, this is along wet Baldwin Creek. And Baldwin's pretty beat up, so there's a lot of erosion. So these are not long-term fixes, and the district's job is to determine what are the right fixes. That's Sewer University.